What's up, guys? Welcome to Kinda Funny Games Daily. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. It's, again, it's been a while. Tongue thing? Well, I'm familiar. sorry, what, Kevin? Can we introduce the show? What, Kevin? You stuck your tongue out and vibrated Kevin, it like that Nick. Doesn't seem that doesn't like was nasty. I I'm Greg Miller trending Gr- games. Tim wasn't watching. It was gross. <laughs> it happened. Tim would call me on it. Instead, Tim is looking great in the PS I Love You XOXO sweatshirt available right now. Where can you get it? Kindoffunny.com slash store. Wow, that's true. That's true. Ladies and gentlemen, though, this show is not about pimping out kind of funny products, except it kind of is sometimes. What are you talking about? We're about to go to housekeeping. Here's a million shows. <laughs> it's about video games. This is about all the nerdy video game news that you need to know. You can watch this show live every weekday at 10 a.m. on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You can get it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com, or you can listen to it on podcast services around the globe. Just search for kind of funny games daily if you want to get the show ad free you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like our patreon producers did muhammad muhammad connor nolan and blackjack we appreciate all three of you and everyone else that's listening no matter how you're listening whether you're paying us money not paying us money we do appreciate you uh today we are brought to you by youtube.com slash kind of funny games but i will tell you about that later because there's so much we got to get into here new like with some housekeeping some stuff going on on youtube's dot com slash kind of funny games we do have stuff that i want to pimp out what is that greg miller a whole bunch of stuff so first off it's finally happened ladies and gentlemen nick scarpino's full playthrough of the last of us part one and i mean like you know last of us number one 2013 last of us well it's technically remastered i digress uh is up youtube.com slash kind of funny games you can go there and watch uh nick play the last of us for the first time ever all he knew was giraffes were in it that's all he knew maybe that's all you know now uh and the thing with that though yeah. is there, there was a lot of issues we were trying to yeah. get it up last week um we uploaded it and a lot of people in the comments were like hey there's some weird issues where like with editing i couldn't yeah. figure it out i went with cool greg looked through the whole timeline and i think it's perfect it took a week but i think it's finally uploaded and all right part two should be going up tomorrow so that's okay. the and the complete playthrough of nick's first time of last of us but Go check it out, youtube.com slash kind of funny games. One of the biggest projects we've ever done. I think you nailed it because all the comments this morning were just yelling about how Nick doesn't respect the game. And so mm-hmm. that, like when you first put it up, there was the, there were those comments as well. But then there were the ones of like, hey, an hour in, it doubles the footage, which again, yeah, we went and checked on. We don't know why that happened. Just a glitch in Premiere. But now that now it's just back to Nick being a crazy person. Exactly, exactly. But that's not all the updates we have, Greg. What else is going on? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? The Kind of Funny Showcase is back, but this time it's called the Gorilla Collective. Yes, you heard us talk about this last week. Then, of course, uh, the Gorilla Collective got delayed. It got delayed one week. Uh, we've teamed up with our friends at the Media Indie Exchange to do a three-day showcase featuring nearly 90 games, and it all kicks off this Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Twitch.tv. Slash kind of, host kind of Funny Games. It's also on yeah. Gorilla Collective. It's at a million different places. Yeah, if you follow us, you'll be able to find it. I'm not going to shut up about it, so get ready for it. Yeah, very exciting stuff. Um, A lot of exciting stuff. Let's get right into it. It's time for the news. We got seven stories today. A baker! We tag team because I'm not hosting. So me and Kevin can do that thing. I like that. I like twins, it. Right, it did throw me off when you started doing it. <laughs> but hey, you know what? Because well, yeah, me and Kevin like to ad lib. You know what I mean? You, here's the thing. You come in here and you're Mozart. You want all the notes in the same spot. Me and mm-hmm. me and Kevin come in here. We're jazz. We're going to put them right. wherever we want to put it. Like Go, Go, Kevin. Don't ever do that again, Kevin. Kevin, um, let's record a jazz album this afternoon. Just using our mouths. <laughs> Speaking of things that are throwing me off, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the news right now, number number one story, PS5 event rescheduled, question mark. Uh, there's this image that came from a Twitch ad that is the same PS5 future of gaming image that we, we saw previously when they announced that it was going to happen last week. But with the new date now of June 11th at 9 p.m. BST, and that's what threw me off. I'm like, I don't know what BST is. British Standard Time, right? Yeah, but... I had to Google that to find that out. Um, but what I did Google, <laughs> what I learned after that is to translate that to, to times that mean something to me. Uh, it's 1 p.m. Pacific time. So the same time as what yeah, last week's event was going to be, 4 p.m. Eastern time, and then, yeah, 9 p.m. BST, if that. It seems like they literally just push it a week, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kevin, I just tossed in. This is a late edition there as a hyperlink. Uh, of course, I saw this originally through Daniel Ahmad, industry uh, analyst over on Twitter. Uh, one of his follow ups is he actually has the ad from Twitch. So we're in this weird spot right now where, of course, we're rec- recording live. Uh, I almost said Ricotta for some reason. Uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Once I saw this post, which was roughly around like 9 a.m. an hour ago i thought immediately all right cool we're gonna get an update from playstation a playstation's gonna do it i turned on the twitter alerts on my phone and all that nothing so far and so it seems even ign wrote this up and ign wrote it up as if there is and maybe they've been signed information because of uh summer of gaming or whatever they're calling it uh they wrote it up with no question there's no question that it has been rescheduled to this date and of course not only is daniel a trusted source this is a, as if kevin's showing it right now a, a live twitch ad that you can see for yourself that is playing in front of stuff so it seems pretty legit that yeah we are just waiting now on an official word from playstation that yes it is june 11th 1 p.m pacific time yeah and it's crazy that i feel like we've spent years talking about video game events but i feel like specifically this event we've talked about more than any other event in history <laughs> right like how many we've talked about we this talk one about? a lot when is it going to happen oh it's going to happen next month oh it's going to happen the next month oh it's happening oh it's not happening oh when's it going to happen oh now it's maybe happening <laughs> and then we're finally going to live react to it this week right greg yeah. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, as usual, ladies and gentlemen, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games for all your crazy reactions to video game stuff. We'll be live June 11th, 1 p.m. Pacific time, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. We will watch the entire conference with you. We will talk over it, which means we'll talk over it, which means if you don't want people talking over it, you should go somewhere else. We understand. However, if you are going to tune in somewhere else to watch it with no commentary, we urge you to come back after uh, the show. This is breaking news for you, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin, can I get the breaking news noise? Wrong, 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 wrong. Thank you, Kevin. Breaking news from kind of funny. Uh, right after uh, they, we wrap up the PlayStation 5 uh, reveal event, we will do a live episode of PS I Love You XOXO as the post show. So if you're you, waiting tomorrow with bated breath for PS I Love You, we're actually holding it till the end of this conference. That means uh, that, yeah, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Come be a part of it. Chat, you will need to be on your game as uh, you ask us questions and we uh, answer them and give you our speculations and pull information that will be breaking, I'm sure, on the PlayStation blog and IGN and all these different places. I'm sure there'll be a lot to talk about. Very, very exciting. So, and also, because we're talking about it right now, Last of Us 2 review this Friday. Yep. That's exciting <laughs> stuff. That'll be what a week for problem. PlayStation. Yeah, it's for definitely PlayStation. PlayStation. Yeah. Very exciting stuff. So if you um, haven't caught that, of course, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games or the Gamescast feeds on podcast services around the globe. Subscribe. And at 12.01 a.m. Pacific time, Friday uh, morning, we will drop our Last of Us Part 2 uh, review. I will be live in the YouTube comments for the first hour of it. So I'll be able to answer some questions there. But like I said, uh, obviously, uh, well, I didn't actually say, I guess. So the plan here is this. P.S. I love you post show for the PS5 event. We talk, we hang out, we see what's up. Then Last of Us review drops uh, Friday. Then the next week's P.S. I love you. So one week from now is P.S. I love you XOXO will be your Last of Us uh, part two questions answered. Of course, no spoilers, stuff like that. But whatever you read from all the reviews, watching all the reviews you want answered, you hit us up. Well, me and Blessing will tackle there. And the review will be Greg Miller, Tim Gettys, Blessing at AOEA Jr. and Christine Steimer from What's Good Games. Oh, so look at that, really everybody. Good. Dream yeah. Team Reunited. Cannot wait. That sounds like a lot of fun. But yeah, Greg, so we've talked about this event so much. At this sure. point, is there anything more to say before we get into it? Have I asked you on the record on a show, do you think they'll show the box? No, you haven't. Do you think they'll show the box? I can't believe I'm torn on it because I feel yeah. like a month ago, my answer would have been absolutely. But I feel like just with everything that's happened and how the, the world has changed and the industry has changed and these events have changed, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see it. But I think that Sony has been watching all of the kind of reactions that have been going on. And they've learned that they can literally just post any small piece of the PS5 and get an insane reaction. So that kind of leads me to believe, why would they show it if they don't need to here? Like, focus on the games. Show off a whole bunch of games. Show the box on a random Wednesday in a tweet. You know, like, or in an Instagram post and have that be your new most liked Instagram post. Like, keep that kind of story going Um, because seeing the box is one of the least important things in terms of selling, no, but in terms of selling the console. Yeah. But it's one of the most hype things as a gamer just because it's cool, right? Yeah. So it's like they don't need to show it. It's not like it's something where people are going to not buy it because of how it looks. Here's the thing about it is 
earlier on when we were talking about this, especially when they popped up with the event and started talking about it and saying, oh, it's about the PlayStation 5 games. You're going to have to look at the PlayStation 5 games. And what I, I was like, oh, look at how they're wording this. They're wording this so they don't have to show the box or they don't have to expect it, but they're setting your expectations that you're not going to see it. I think, especially with this one week delay from where they originally wanted to be, they now are, and I don't know, I uh, but they're closer than ever to having to show it in the same way they had to show the dual sense. What I'm reading to you now, Kev, uh, Kevin, sorry, uh, Tim, well, Kevin's here. Hey, Kevin. Uh, what I'm reading hey, now, Greg. Uh, is, how you having, did you have a good weekend, Kev? No, we'll get into it later. <laughs> uh, what I'm reading now is <laughs> Business Korea. This is Business Korea. All right, businesskorea.co.kr. Uh, they're do Hung Yu uh, writes, uh, production of parts related to pl- Sony's PlayStation 5 starts this week. We expect the PlayStation 5 to contribute a, to semi- semiconductor industry earnings improvement, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he goes on, but he keeps on going here, right? And he's, do we, we expect, per- to, he, they're talking about the fact they are starting, he, according to, uh, what is it, Co- Business Korea, they're starting to actually do production on the PlayStation 5. Which means now we are in a race against time to see if PlayStation can officially reveal this thing or if it will be leaked on uh, 4chan. And so when you get into that, I think your back's against the wall in the same exact way it was with the DualSense controller, where clearly PlayStation's original plan in December 2019 was not just to shit out a blog post and be like, here's the DualSense controller and Jim Ryan or whoever talking, it wasn't Jim Ryan, uh, the other guy uh, talking in a blog post about it, right? But they said very tellingly in there, hey, everybody, we're starting to ship the DualSense to our developer partners, so we wanted to let you see it too, which between the lines means we know one of these motherfuckers is about to walk into a park and take a photo of it, so we need to show it to you rather than they do. And I think that's the same situation you're in here. So I think that, I think it, you save it as your one more thing moment and you don't have to give us the release date. You don't have to give us the price. I hope they give us these things. I wanted this PlayStation five event to be the one big bam. Here's everything. It is your E3. It is your PlayStation uh, conference from E3. Um, I think again, with the delay, we might be back to that where again, PlayStation's got it. PlayStation's got to be looking at it in some way and be like, dude, 2020 is unbelievable. (laughs) We have to figure out how to just talk. I'm almost positive. They're not going to give the price. I, I feel like just with where the world's at now, it doesn't behoove them to have bad news, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's you, not going to be good news. No matter what the number is that the PS5 is going to be, it's not going to be good news because they're not going to be able to hit any level that is good news. So I feel like with where they're at, where it's like they can just say what they want to say, Yeah, don't say the other stuff. Wait till later. That's my thing is when we were talking about this event when it first got – officially announced and they were stressing games i think you go through the entire thing you show a bunch of amazing games and then the, and you do and you don't have to do a cheesy one more thing but you're like there's one more thing and you show the box and we get a sexy package and 360 spins you know what i mean and talk, looking at it and the vents and the cooling whatever the fuck it is and you end yeah, there I see that and i think thing. huh I, I don't see that being a one more thing like i i definitely i think one more thing has to be a game if it, and, and by one more you thing, want to open with like, it just get so it out of the way. Here's the rip the bandaid off. Here's PlayStation. Yeah, 5. maybe not even like it doesn't need to be open, but I, I'm saying first third. Yeah, of whatever. I, see it. It. I know what you're saying, but here's my, but here's where I'm with what I, why I was saying that right is I think that if you have a, this game event, even though they've messaged it as a game event, you go for an hour and change talking about all these games, and you end on a big game. The headlines would still be PlayStation Five shows all these great games, but we still don't know what it looks like. I think you have to sh- if you show what the box looks like anywhere in this thing and you show a bunch of amazing games, I think everybody walks away happy. Sure, there'll be the thing of, oh, I can't wait to buy it. I wish I knew how much it was and when it's coming out. But that's not nearly as, that won't dominate the headlines in the way of not showing the box would. I don't know. I I, I feel like, who cares about, like, we still don't know what the box looks like. It's like, I know, but it's like, but that's the thing is like, that's a, that's an exciting thing. We still don't know what the box looks like. It's not like, a, what are they hiding from us? There's no bad news <laughs> what the box looks like. You get what I'm saying? It's like, no, I, get, I, get I don't you. think distract from, whatever the games are going to be i just feel imagine like this is sorry, the games are going to be bangers like that's oh, the thing is like, and, and but with this even though like they've been promoting it all about the games we have learned over the last especially couple of years that while words and semantics matter they don't always matter when it comes to these game events of like you can call it a nintendo switch showcase there's still going to be 3ds games like sometimes those rules work sometimes they don't the, so there's no consistency with this them talking about the games the controller is still front and center on the advertisement that's hardware right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's like even if they had the controller being shown off somewhere that's the only thing we don't even know what this is going to look like <laughs> like it's like how many people humans are going to actually be on camera for this you yeah. know if at all is jim ryan wearing a shirt and tie is he wearing a polo shirt is, is he, he going to wear a t-shirt 
We don't know, you know. And I, Sean Lanning to come back. That to me is exciting. I, I doubt that. I doubt that. Um, but I've talked about this Heard so many way. times. The the PlayStation meeting 2013 is one of my favorite conferences of all time. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that they opened so strong with connecting the PlayStation community and making it feel like it's more than just, oh, we make video games. It's like, no, no, no. We are all gamers together and we're excited for what this next thing is and then going through and going through all the architecture showing like we've already gotten past a lot of the boring parts quote unquote in the last couple months of that so it's like seeing the box is an exciting thing right but i i i wouldn't be surprised if we see it but it really depends on what the format of this thing is you know but i can see this thing opens hype montage kind of just building up like the future of gaming, blah, 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 blah. Hopefully it's really fucking cool. And then, yeah, they get in, talk for a second, maybe have a game trailer or whatever, but then be like, cool, let's talk about the box. And then you do see the flip you around 3d shit, like yeah, yeah. focus on all it, the different. It's, it's like it. disassembled and then assembled. <laughs> They're That's talking about the it. solid state drive as it slides in and shit. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and then it just like cuts, but then it's just like trailer, 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 trailer. Right. Yeah. And it's like that's that would be fantastic. That's perfect. But take, but take that the box part out of it, and like I don't think that they missed the mark. <laughs> if I don't they, think they missed the mark, but I think that PlayStation has to be not. I mean, and they don't have to be. I guess this is stuff we worry about, and I'm sure the bean counters at PlayStation don't because they know it doesn't really matter. Someone, me, whoever is worried about pub, public reception, and I think the conference you just talked about, Tim, is bulletproof. If they do that, right? And the games are bangers, obviously, which you assume they would be. But if they if they nail everything you just did, everybody comes out of the event being like, fuck, I loved this game and that game and the box looks cool or I don't like the box or this. And you have the conversation about it. Whereas I just I feel some like bullets. I don't huh? think it's bulletproof. There's some bullets and those bullets are the price and release date. I, well, feel like, I don't think you do that. You don't talk about them here. But, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, but those are the things I feel like the box and those things go together more than the box and games. And that's why, and here's my thing though. So I think we're on the same page where that's my thing is I think you could do the games. One more thing. This is your look at the box and everybody's happy that you walk and they even say there, we're going to tell you more about that and release plans next month or whatever. mm -hmm. And then, and then you, then you nip it completely in the bud where people are like, all right, cool. I have a whole bunch of shit to be excited for. And I can't wait for next month. And there's all these great games I just saw. Yeah. I just feel like from a PR perspective, the games are going to be awesome. We like expect that, right? If Horizon Zero Dawn 2 isn't a banger, there'll be problems. There will be problems, um, but I feel like the the price is going to be bad news. The release date is nebulous at this point. Like, who even fucking knows what it's going to be? So that's like barely news, right? Like no. they can choose a date. We'll fucking see. But it's like I think having the box with that is at least distracting of the bad stuff. Like that is like the glimmer of hope of like everything you just said. Where the people that like it are going to be stoked about it, and the people that have issues are going to start a conversation. And it's like at least that conversation is going to like distract from the price. You could do it both ways, though. I mean, if it's just a 360 reveal of the box at the end or whatever, then the next showcase that is, hey, here's the price and the release date, and here's actually what this box is doing and why it's got the crazy cooling in it. And like, hey, yours is, you got a really loud PlayStation 4 at home, don't you? This motherfucker won't be, even though it will That's be. That's all I want, Greg. That's all I fucking want. More than Have anything. you shared your video publicly of you I, walking well, I around? The last, I didn't share this one, um, okay. but Jesus, man, it's insane. I was like 30 feet away. <laughs> from my ps4 in another room and you could still hear it oh it's no good it's done it's done so much so much good um regardless i'm super excited about this event and it's like i cannot wait i hope that it is such a banner of a showcase like we have never had with the exception of the nintendo switch reveal event uh we've never had this much potential perfection when it comes to game announcements and i think that the nintendo switch event failed on many levels and i think looking back on it it's more Japanese of a one. yeah exactly um but it's going into that there was so much things like we didn't know we didn't know anything all we knew was that breath of the wild was coming to to switch we didn't know about mario kart we well i guess we did from the little clips but like we just didn't know about like oh all these different franchises all these different partners like anything can fucking happen here it's different here is anything can happen from sony's first parties <laughs> all of them have nothing they're working on right now we need we're about to find out or we could find out well we can't and that's the problem <laughs> i can't wait for thursday to answer those and many more questions greg 1 p.m pacific twitch.tv slash kind of funny games story number two cyberpunk 2077 will not be on stadia at launch this comes from Shut matt Herslow 
at IGN. CD Projekt Red has quietly revealed that Cyberpunk 2077 will not be available on Google Stadia when it launches on PC and consoles this September. In a press release discussing the upcoming advertising campaign for Cyberpunk, the developer states Cyberpunk 2077 will be released on September 20 or September 17th, 2020 for the PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. By the end of the year, the game will debut on Google Stadia. A discrepancy between platform release dates has not been previously specified. However, it's now clear that Stadia launch will come sometime after the global launch of September 17th. Not shocking by any stretch of the imagination. If you remember back when they, I forget when it was, but the one of the ones where they announced this or just showed something or put out the release date or whatever for it i remember on a live react being like wait they didn't say stadia like they made they their verbiage has been cloudy before but it's nice to see it actually uh-huh. hey, uh that hey yeah it's not happening on the same day which is just yeah. such a man stadia just down in the mud this, this they just can't have games yeah it's such a it's such a bummer because i i feel like stadia had so much going against it and so much going for it in the last couple of years, and I would have predicted that they would have made this happen. I was thinking a year, was, my, a year exactly. and a half ago. But my now, hope like, was that this would be the first big game they nailed. Yeah, and the fact when that they're not, it's like, okay, you're going to be playing catch up forever, and there's like not much to catch up once you right. start like losing out on this because like this is the the last Cyberpunk's going to be the last major current gen game, right? September. I mean, like, yeah, well, you're talking about nothing with, like, a cross-platform or a version I mean, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just, I'm just talking about, like, pure coming out on these systems. Like, I guess that we we don't know exactly, like, the Call of Duty and whatever EA is doing and stuff like that, like, maybe. But Cyberpunk feels different than those in terms of... Yeah, no, no, no. In terms of, like, a... Yes, you're right, then. I, I We all understand what you're saying. Yes, there will be some other game that comes out on... You know, Valhalla is on both, obviously. But, like, there's... Yes, I understand what you're saying. For Yes, we understand. Yeah. So that just sucks that Stadia is still not even going to stick that landing. And it's like, okay, cool. If you didn't even get to catch up before the next thing starts, I have no faith that we're going to start next gen, you know, all together at the starting line. And that's the thing. I'm, I'm over here on uh, Stadia's site, right? New releases, or it is ordered newest to oldest, right? It's uh, Panzer Dragoon Remake, Power Rangers, Battle for the Grid, Little Nightmares, Super Hot, Mortal Kombat 11, uh, Aftermath Collection, uh, Sundered, uh, Jotun Valhalla Edition, Ember Early Access, Doom 64. So it's like, I remember Doom 64 has been out a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, there's that. Not much more to say there. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I was hopeful that this year they'd be able to catch up and make it that, okay, everything. You you know that the games have one release date and they're coming to stay to the same day. And so even though I, I saw it coming with this, you wonder when, if ever, they'll actually catch up. Yeah. Moving on to the Xbox side of things. Uh, this is uh, Xbox Lockhart Evidence Mounts by Francisco DeMeo at WCCF Tech. The Xbox Series S slash Lockhart console is yet to be officially announced, but it seems like it is indeed real, as the rumors are circulating online suggest. Twitter user TitleOS recently discovered a reference to Lockhart in the Windows OS libraries. While the reference doesn't mean a whole lot by itself, it would make no sense for Microsoft to include it if the console is not coming alongside the Xbox Series X. While nothing official has been said about the Series S, insiders come claimed yes. that the console hasn't been canceled. Last month, Windows Central's Jez Corden revealed that some developers he spoke with confirmed they're still targeting the console. As for the timing of the announcement, it will likely come when Microsoft will be ready to announce the pricing, as it will be the console's main draw over the more powerful Series X. What do you think? I don't know. It's a, I, you know, you, I feel like the rumor on this runs hot and cold all the time, where... In the beginning, before we knew anything about Series X or, you know, Lockhart officially, it, it seemed like, oh, of course they're going to do this. And then the fact they've been silent about it for so long ma- makes me wonder about it. And then to be here and that they're putting it into this, especially with rumors of it being canceled all around, you know what I mean? Like there's so many different moving parts to this one that I really don't know. And it is, do you launch Xbox Series X and Lockhart at the same time, or do you launch Xbox Series X, give it its time in the sun, and then next year put out this, hey, here's the Lockhart edition, right? That is, if you just want this. We're phasing out Xbox Ones, basically. You know what I mean? Like, this is more powerful than an Xbox One, but less than an Xbox Series X. And, you know, it's streaming, it's this, it's it's, it's capitalizing on everything we're doing with the new 
yeah. Xbox brand. So let's simplify this so that there isn't on a store shelf the original Xbox One, the original or the Xbox One S, the Xbox you know the Xbox One X uh, or Xbox One uh, uh, the Pro One that I can't remember the fucking name okay. of right now. Uh, then the Xbox Series X is out there too. Like let's just get it down to two SKUs on the shelves. That makes perfect sense to me. Saying, mm-hmm. hey, you walk in the store, there's a, there's two Xboxes on the shelves. One is cheaper. It does similar things, but not as well. Got it. Perfect. It's more the thing of all the different bundles and crazy things that are out there that you're like, why? But in the same breath, like they just put out the, you know, or the, they started selling the Cyberpunk uh, Xbox One uh, bundle, right? So then it's like, you even if you were winding down Xbox One production, you can't, why are we putting out new bundles for it and then having stuff out? It's so, can you, you don't, I don't think you want to go out at launch and put out two systems right there. I think you come out with the Xbox Series X, make your impression, make your statement, you keep using your Xbox One, buy an Xbox One if you want, and then later on do this Lockhart business. Yeah, man, I'm so interested in this. And like, I can't, I love that we still don't know everything and we're months away from this launch mm-hmm. because eventually we're going to have to find out. And you're right for traditional ways of thinking, right? Like that's yeah. just, that makes sense for how video games have worked in the past. But with Xbox being so weird with the the new uh, things like Game Pass and with xCloud and all of this, um, I don't have all the, the facts here, but last week I was reading an article about um, Game Pass coming to Samsung TVs, like smart TVs. And like, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I see this. But like that is such a Huge. major thing where it's like okay cool so there's just gonna be an xbox game pass on S- samsung smart tvs what's next after that where does that end at what point does xbox actually give a shit what you're playing on and we keep talking about that but i think that that's becoming more and more clear with that train of thinking i wouldn't be surprised if they put out both at the same time and it's just like uh no nah, we're just we're committing to this we're, we're going all out get whatever you want we're giving you the options like well, that's the future right the that's pushing for yeah yeah but i wonder like at why not start the future sooner if they are have already been laying the groundwork for everything where it's like let's out the gate give people as many opportunities to have the best experience with as possible even if the best experience is the lockhart versus the xbox one you know mm-hmm. for the people that aren't ready to make that series x jump nanobiologist writes in and says hi greg and tim so the worst kept console secret continues with more references to lockout popping up in windows code well i feel sorry for xbox not having the chance to surprise us with a cheaper xbox model what's the point of keeping it secret now all we really don't know now is the price now i want to go into some speculation that we haven't really considered before lockout was rumored to be the discless xbox now the xbox one sade but what if lockout is still discless but an on-the-go fire stick like xbox running xcloud would you consider grabbing an xbox cortana stick to play your games on the go do you see this as a potential in the future with the way that xbox and cloud gaming are going could this be in the near future or is my head going too far into the clouds <laughs> like that <laughs> real talk with what i was just saying about the samsung tv thing like that wouldn't be surprising oh it, no i mean that's, that's the future xbox wants to move to right like that's what they're talking about when they do this mm-hmm. um I saw the article you're talking about in, in different places. And then Sam Mobile had an interesting one that no, Project xCloud is not coming to Samsung TVs yet. It's talking about this access program that gives you all the stuff bundled together, including cloud. Samsung access for smart TVs is a bit different from it for smartphones. The program for TVs lets you go uh, go of the upgrade option and includes premium content for various partners in the Samsung premium care service. Premium care service, yada, yada, yada. You choose $100, $120 and includes Xbox Game Pass for eight months, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a few websites are reporting that Microsoft's Project Cloud, xCloud and Xbox Game Pass could come to the Xbox or Samsung TVs, uh, but that's not true, at least not right now. If you choose the Xbox Game Pass ultimate subscription with Samsung access for your TV, you could use it to play compatible games on your Windows PC or Xbox for eight months. Got it. Okay, okay, okay. So it's just a bundle. But but you're not off. I mean, this it's, is legitimately the future Xbox and Phil talk about all the time. Totally. And then these are like laying the stones of the foundation for that. And this is the thing that nanobiologists is talking about that it wouldn't be surprising to me if like we talked about like what the, what the price range would be for this Lockhart, whatever. And like we're talking about 300, whatever. And like during our predictions, I even went lower than that. I think I said 150. It could potentially be $60 for one of these things. And yeah. at that point, it's like, launched at the same time with the series x right like hey get this if you want all the fancy shit if you just want to play if you just want it with with using cloud gaming and xyz blah 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 here's this thing that's just like a chromecast that you plug in that would be freaking insane such an easy sell to get people into the ecosystem i agree and here's a question i think plays into it that i had later in the show for you but i'm bringing it here uh 
Zygerani, Zygeron. Uh, good morning, KFGD hosts. I have a simple question for y'all. What's the deal with xCloud? We haven't heard much on it in a while, and we still have no idea when it's officially coming out. Have any of you tried it out? Uh, do you think we could see more about it this month uh, from Xbox or later this year? Uh, anyways, stay safe and much love from, for the kind of funny crew. Uh, Ziggy, Zigger, Zig, Zagarion. Zagarion. Um, this, I think, plays into the thing because, of course, yeah, uh, you know, the question you asked, right? Or I'm sorry, that uh, Nano asked, right? Would I carry a Cortana stick for 60 bucks and plug that in anywhere? Yeah, if it worked really well. And that's the thing I think xCloud's been building to, right? Last year, they talked about project x cloud was going to go into open beta this year and that it would su- it would you know go into using your actual games library and xbox game pass meaning that right now there's select titles on x cloud you can play for free uh however they'd open it up to what you already own and then if you're a game pass member what you could get into there i think that is such a huge part of xbox the next five to ten years of xbox that that's the big missing piece on top of all this, where I, I want to see them talk about that. I want to see them roll out that functionality, and I want to see how that plays into what they're doing with Lockhart. And then, because that's the thing, is like, if they're still going to keep it in beta this year, but open it up to more people and open it up to your entire games library, is that something you want to be touting at launch with, a, you know, the Lockhart? Mm-hmm. I say no, or even if it is the stick, right? You, you want to walk before you can run, so I'd want that opened up to more people using more tech growing faster than ever and be free. You know what I mean? It, it, the way it already is right now that you jump in there and you have free games. So people get in there, they kick the tires on it. They figure out the problems. And then next year when they do launch Lockhart or this stick or whatever you want to call it, it is this idea of, Hey, we've already proven this thing worked. We've ironed out the wrinkles. It's, you know, latency is down to barely nothing. Here you go. This is a way to go tackle it. Yeah. So I, I think you hear about it soon. Done. I hope you, I hope we hear about it. One of the, you know, showcases. Definitely. And, you know, Xbox has been saying that we're getting every month there's going to be news with their 2020 program and stuff. But there's one man out there, only one man, Greg Miller, that has gathered all of the different video game events. E3 might be dead. This week was supposed to be E3. Me and you would have been in L.A. Not today, but tomorrow Tomorrow we would have flown <laughs> uh, to, to go down there and like get our hands on all the video games and stuff. But since that's not happening, the video game industry has been splintered across many different avenues, about many different press conferences, directs, connects, whatever the hell it is, right? But one man made a calendar that has all of these things. And that man is Jeff Grubb with the Jeff Grubb Summer Game Mess. Kevin Coelho, can you please bring up the, the first tweet? that i have there so for anyone for anyone following along with kind of funny games daily um at some point we rebranded the show uh kind of funny grub daily because we just keep referencing him and all of the the work he's been doing on this summer game mess calendar um but back in 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 may he first did a calendar it's changed over time whatever he did an updated calendar june 5th so just a couple days ago um kev can you click into that black notepad screenshot there yeah so this is like where it stands currently uh, i hate to do this to you tim it's What's incorrect up? jeff's updated 36 minutes and 20 minutes ago oh let's get 20 to minutes those, ago man. he says xboxing day dropped all the way to august so jeff grubb now hearing that xbox xboxing day is in august along with another state of play apparently well okay you cut me off at the knees here with that Greg. sorry oh wait <laughs> because, in a good way or bad way uh this well, is information point- you need to know the point that I was trying to make is the June update that he did on June 5th had no reference to Xboxing Day, period, mm-hmm. which is something I noticed because I was very – the things I'm most intrigued about on this are what Xboxing Day is. It I am, assume it's talking about Lockhart in some way, right? <laughs> but I also want to know what this Mel Gibson picture slash Tom Cruise shirtless volleyball <laughs> You know, because Jeff puts this in there. That's the problem with Grubb and why I can't trust him. He just goes in and makes things up. Call this guy right now. Have He's him explain. Not well, but so here's the thing, Greg. What I, the reason I wanted to bring this up is there's another tweet that I had that showed that he had this thing on May 5th originally. He had June 10th was going to be Xboxing Day, yeah. right? And then it just disappeared. So now you're telling me that it's actually there. But yes, we're going to call Jeff Grubb himself because I, I want to get to the bottom of this. I want to figure out what's going on. It's with not going to name Day. names, name sources. You know what I mean? Frankly, I'm sick of it. Oh, no. What's, what is this? Jeff Grubb, what's up? This is Tim Geddes. You're with Greg Miller. We are on Kind of Funny Games Daily. How are you doing? 
I'm doing all right. It was better before you guys called me. <laughs> so I want to let you know that we appreciate you very much, as I'm sure you know that we talk about you every day, every weekday at the very least. Yeah, it's okay. I, you know, I try to listen every day. It's a good <laughs> so, so here's my my question for you. All right, and, it, and it's already been kind of answered because you did some updates while the show is live. <laughs> but I noticed that this Xboxing Day mysteriously disappeared from your summer game mess calendar, and I was I was trying to figure out what was the reasoning behind that. So now you're saying August. Do you have any more to say about this? I know you have your secrets. You have your hints. Yeah, I got you know, so. What's uh, so I took it down. I wanted to give it some time. I knew it moved for the time it was scheduled for, but I wanted to give it a little bit of a like, figure out exactly what was happening. I looked into a little bit more. It seems like Microsoft definitely doesn't want to go before so probably this week. It seems almost this week. So that was the big reason they moved it. So, uh, if you care to let us know this do you think that xboxing day includes any lockhart information i think it includes lockhart information i think that's i think it's exactly what that event is yeah for sure very exciting stuff do you have yeah. anything else you would like to say here on kind of funny games daily um you know what you guys that's all i really want to say this is good stuff for sure <laughs> i love it i'm very excited for whatever this mel gibson picture is <laughs> you know what I, a lot of people figured that one out at this point. It's like, uh, you know, they were going to announce it earlier this month. They had to keep pushing, keep pushing it. So it's like people had solved the mystery. So if you really look and kind of put uh, connect the dots there, I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out. But uh, I, I, you know what? I would I want to make sure people set their expectations, set it at like a five out of ten, so that like maybe maybe if it's something that's like up your alley, you could be super excited. Otherwise, I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, okay. So. <laughs> Just well, trying to have fun. Just trying to have fun, Tim. I love it, man. This is the the one calendar to rule them all. Thank you very much for everything you do. Thanks for giving me a call, man. You guys have a good one. All right, bye. Jeff Grubb, ladies and gentlemen, what you gotta nice love man. him. It's really yeah. fun. I mean, the the I mean, call's not big... okay. It's it started off sounding like yeah, it was rough. I was like, I was, Ooh, <laughs> man, where are we going with this one? But we got there. We got there. <laughs> Interesting stuff, though. So hey, if Jeff Grubb's saying Lockhart exists, I believe Lockhart exists. You know what I mean? Yeah, rub. that's the, it's the only option we have. Moving on, the PC gaming show lineup has been revealed with 50 plus games. As in years past, the PC gaming show will consist of world exclusive trailers, gameplay reveals, announcements, and interviews. Highlights include an exclusive interview uh, with Rocketworks founder Dean Hall about his next project, a first look at Surgeon Simulator 2, the debut of a new trailer from New Blood Interactive, a special surprise for Torchlight 3 fans, and several new trailers from Humble Games. Um, this year's supersized lineup includes more than 50 games featuring, Jesus, there is a lot of different devs here. 2K Games Media, Amazon Games, Atlas, Battlestate. Stop right there. Atlas? Atlas. Atlas. I wonder. At the PC what does that mean? Gaming show. Atlas. If these turbo taxing dorks get Persona 5 before Switch owners get Switch. Persona 5, <laughs> God is dead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Continue. That, that brings up, I mean, an interesting conversation that's separate from this, but, you know, there's all these rumors of Bloodborne coming to, to PC. It's just like, it's so crazy that we're, we're like pc gaming is is becoming more and more mainstream than ever just with like ease of use exactly. now and just like with with you know twitch becoming what it is where it's kind of like you know gaming minecraft changed gaming to the point that pcs became just as relevant as consoles ever were and i think that we're going to continue to keep going down that type of um path and yeah like with playstation's exclusives whether they're you know first party titles or getting into things like with Atlas, with Persona, what could that look like if Persona 5 were to come to PC? What does that mean going forward? What does that mean for, you know, eventually when we get to the PS5 games and yeah. you ever see Last of Us 2 on PC? I don't know. God, I don't know. God. Uh, then there's a whole bunch of other other people too. Merge games, Modus games. Uh, let's see. Don't Sega. Nod is on there. Yeah. That was an interesting call. Don't Nod. Yeah. And, and not yeah. interesting, but I, I, you know, as much as I love Don't Nod, I was just like, okay, cool. What are you guys up to? Glumberland, the people that made Ooblets. Uh, Wolf Eye Studios, the people that made Weird West, which I don't know what that is, but sounds very intriguing. Anyway, exciting. Glumberland is a pretty, <laughs> pretty silly name. 
All right. And I like that they put it in there as Glumberland, parentheses, Ooblets, to explain to the fact that, like, hey, I know you've never heard of these developers. You heard Ooblets, though. That's how this works. Yeah. So, cool. You can watch the PC Gaming Show on twitch.tv slash PC Gamer or youtube.com slash PC Gamer on Saturday, June 13th at 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, it, it's kind of funny to me that the the irony in, you know, this actually becoming E3 week again. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone tried running from it. Right, it just, from it's it. inevitable. It has to come back. I'll come back to this. <laughs> um, story number five, Need for Speed Heat adds crossplay, and it's the first to do it. Over first EA, EA you side of things. Oh, I left out the EA. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this comes from Michael McWhorter at Polygon. Need for Speed Heat, the 2019 racing game developed by Ghost Games, is getting cross-play support on PS4, Windows, both on Origin and Steam, and Xbox One starting June 9th. Criterion Games, which has taken over development of the Need for Speed franchise, announced cross-play support on Monday, confirming that Tuesday's update will be the final one for Heat. Uh, Need for Speed Heat will be the first EA-developed game to support cross-platform multiplayer, said Matt Webster, General Manager of Criterion Games. Uh, once you've installed the update, see full update notes here. You can go there and check them out, including other fixes as well. Uh, you can opt in to race players across the different consoles, like we said. Uh, you can search for your friends who are playing on any of the above systems, given they've opted in for cross play as well inside the find players menu then you go to the ea friends tab in the party menu to see who's online to play with uh need for speed heat as well as need for speed rivals was 2016's need for speed um was released on steam alongside other ea games last week ea says more of its pc catalog will come to steam webster said fans should watch ea play live on june 18th for more need for speed and steam announcements we'll talk about that a little bit later um criterion is also developing the next need for speed game uh, regarding need for speed heat and criterion's new role as franchise caretaker webster said we're listening to what you love about this experience and what you all believe could be even better with their insights we have a terrific foundation to create the most expressive most socially connected action pack yet for need for speed fans and beyond Beyond. We are also considering making Need for Speed Underground three. I added that last part. I just, that. I just really liar. hope. I just really hope one day that they they just they just do it. And at this point, Greg, with the decade of dreams, it's gonna happen. We're gonna right. get a Need for Speed Underground three. It has to happen, or a reboot, or some shit. Anyways, You'll get that Frank, and never ever ever get Skate four. <laughs> <laughs> Frank bring Furter, back Road Rash. They will take care of everything. Skate fans will continue to be fucked over. Frank Furter writes in says, "Good morning, Greg and Tim. EA is finally going to start crossplay with Need for Speed Heat. Why? 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 I'm sure there's some hardcore fans that are excited about this. However, why would you dip your toes into crossplay with such a niche genre? Why wouldn't EA start with something like Battlefront Two or release a new multiplayer game and say it'll be crossplay? Why pick Need for Speed Heat?" Because, Frank Furter, you forgot the golden lesson of one uncharted Drake's fortune. Greatness from small beginnings. Why not start with something that is incredibly niche and go ahead, figure it out. Let's uh, We're going to start cross-play with, no offense to Need for Speed Heat, a uh, game that nobody has expectations for. Or expectations are drastically lower than if you were to say, all right, Battlefront 2, the game that we've brought back to prominence, that we actually got re-reviewed on IGN, that everybody's like... Cool. They learned from all the microtransaction bullshit. Now they are ready to actually jump in and do a thing. Let's go. Like, you don't want to fuck that up. You don't want to fuck up all the momentum. So go and do this. Take this game out there. Learn how you're doing that. Take this for a spin. Absolutely. Hey, there you go. I absolutely love that, though. I mean, that's that's what it is. It's like you need to make sure that you're getting the smaller things work, working in order for the big flagships to be able to, to roll it out without without issue. But even with that, though, um, I looked into a couple numbers here that I thought were interesting. I thought the Need for Speed Heat was like an absolute flop, um, but it has a 72 on Metacritic. Granted, I'd expect more and want more from a Need Tim for Gettys, Speed game. Tim Gettys, the uh, patented phrase, swimming in sevens. Swimming at seven. No, well, that's the Michael Michael Huber over at Easy Eyes. He patented it. Michael like Stuber never heard of him. I hate you. I hate you so damn much. Uh, but yeah, seventy two on Metacritic, which I was kind of surprised by. I thought that it was going to be more of like a fifty something, you know, mm. based on the way that people talked about that game. It also seemed like people didn't talk about that game unless it was negative. Um, a fun little thing, just in the side, just because this made me laugh. Dual Shockers did give it a three out of ten, and the the quote was, "If Forza and Heat were in a boxing match, Forza would be Mike Tyson in his prime, and Heat would be a toddler." <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, that's not trying to prove the point i'm trying to make here but the 72 on metacritic is um and i was trying to find sales numbers for need for speed heat to see where it hit 
And going into the launch, EA projected that it was going to uh, get three to four million sales, which is pretty good. And that's just in line with other Need for Speed games. Um, and then we didn't get actual sales numbers since. But what we do have is the first week um, they tweeted out Need for Speed Need for Speed Heat set a new record during the first week with more people playing this game than any other Need for Speed title this generation. So interesting. That's good news. Um, and then that's also backed up by went back and looked at the NPD for that month in November 2019, and it hit number nine. So the game sold. Like, like people have this game. Add on top of that, people that seem to not hate the game. And add on top of that, now it's on Steam. So it's like there is going to be a, a new audience for it. Right. Man, it's not, we're not talking millions and millions, but like you as you call out the audience and not being millions and millions i saw it roll through the twitch chat a second ago too the the idea that you probably need or want crossplay here because of the fact that they're smaller communities unifying them into one gives you a bigger pool to play with right exactly. rather than hey we yeah we're on steam so there's an influx of new players there but playstation 4 xbox they've you know seen people uh, atrophy and leave and not play it daily it's not as much of a reason to go back suddenly if you take everybody toss them into one world one pool one multiplayer that there seems like a much more lively environment Exactly. And so, yeah, I think that this is a this is a good sign um, for EA, from EA, a, a rare time that I'm saying that. But I think that this is a, a good step forward. We've been saying this for months now that going into next gen, if you don't have crossplay, you're going to get laughed out of the room. So yeah. it's good to see that EA is jumping on that early. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that. I mean, yeah, exactly. You know, a year after, you know, Call of Duty did it. But this idea that, yeah, like to what we're saying, like you have to do this now. This is now that, the, you know, the the uh, curtain's been pulled back and people understand that this is not easy, but doable. And, you know, PlayStation and Xbox seem to have laid down arms in the fight. Then, yeah, why aren't you doing this? Yeah. And it's crazy how impactful this crossplay is in a mainstream general sense like seeing uh nick's now playing more multiplayer games than ever which just means he's playing any but still <laughs> cool um but like him and andy being able to play on pc and ps4 and it seems like there's issues there's gonna be issues no matter what with everything but well, like it, yeah exactly <laughs> uh but it's like that's cool to see and then on the other side like my group of friends that are like i've talked about so many different times they're not like hardcore gamers but like they play games randomly and like they'll play big playstation exclusives but then they also play warzone um but it's cool seeing like that group some of them have pc some have xbox some have um ps4 and they're playing warzone together like that's that's awesome that's awesome that that is it's that mainstream of a thing that they're just like oh this this is video games that's how they work um so it's Good to see EA taking the steps to make sure that three years from now, it's just a standard across all of the big games, including Battlefront 3, whenever it happens, right? Yeah. Uh, more EA news here. EA extends free Xbox Series X upgrade offer for Madden NFL 21 after player complaints. This comes from Samit Sakar at Polygon. Uh, Madden NFL 21 publisher EA has extended the duration of its free upgrade offer for the next-gen version of the game, changing its policy in response to criticism from fans and the media. Now the promotion will be valid all the way until the next game, Madden NFL 2022, is released in the summer of 2021. EA announced its offer in early May during an Inside Xbox episode focusing on Series X games in which Microsoft revealed nine titles from third-party publishers that would be part of the company's Smart Delivery Initiative. Supporting Smart Delivery means the customers who buy the Xbox One version of the game in question will receive a free upgrade to the improved Series X version once it's released rather than having to buy another version of the same game. However, EA took a different approach that calls it dual entitlement. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I didn't know that that's what they called it. <laughs> Holy shit. That's because the publisher put time constraints on the offer saying that in order to be eligible for it, Madden NFL 21 customers would have to buy the game on Xbox by December 31st, 2020 and redeem the upgrade by March 31st, 2021. Uh, the Xbox Series X is scheduled to launch this holiday season, so this policy would have left out anyone who didn't buy the next-gen console within its first five or so months. Um, there's a whole bunch of other issues there. During the recent Inside Xbox announcement, we included some dates limiting this dual entitlement approach. Uh, the text on EA's Next Level website now says, having listened to our players' response, we're extending the offer all the way through the season up to the next game, so players can upgrade to Series X whenever they purchase the new console within that period. Got to give credit where credit's due. Yeah. They listened. They yep. they said something. People got upset, and they're like, "This is dumb. You're right. We should fix yep. it." And um, honestly, like I'm going to take this even a step further. I think that it's not necessarily EA's fault that they they fumbled. 
this hey, bit. We're on it. We're, we're on, on, man. We're freaking on. Um, that they fumbled this because we don't know everything about PS4 and Xbox One's uh, equity when it comes to yeah. the, these type of systems going forward. So it's like I'm not surprised that some of the third parties are saying things or doing things that seem to not line up perfectly. Um, I imagine that similar to crossplay. Once we start getting in a little bit more and get a little more information, a lot of this is going to start to just fade away. You know, yeah, homogenize into a way yeah. where we're like, oh, okay, everything is equal. And if you're not, <laughs> you're going to get called out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that, you know, it's, a, it's exactly what you want to see EA do. Where mm-hmm. yeah, exactly they announced something, they did something, they're told that's stupid. People show concrete examples of why it's stupid. Like, you know what? That was stupid. We'll change that. Sorry. Here's a way yeah. we're moving around doing it. Totally. And it, you know, I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they even push this further, um, depending on what PlayStation ends up doing on, on their side. Because if, again, if, if everyone's doing the same thing, you're going to look like an asshole if you're, you know, nickel and diamond people. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's, to, you know, you, you, there's not much more to say. You nail it, right? But, like, but even with that, though, it gets weird know. with sports games and with similar games to that, because where we've moved to such a games as a service world, Sports games are the ones that have it. And sports games are the ones that, you know, I feel that the industry as a whole would have predicted would have done that first. We have been saying a long, long time ago, right? That, yeah, when we're going to move to you buy the game and then you buy roster updates or whatever. Yeah. And it's it's weird that, you know, that's fighting games have kind of done that. Um, the, of course, all the looter shooters and all that stuff have done it. But it's like, yeah, the sports games are the, the ones. And I'm sure there are examples of ones that have. But I'm talking sure, about like, like Madden, NBA NHL. 2K and Madden. It's like, when are we going to see that? Will we see that? What does that look like? I don't know. Um, final story, number seven. EA Play got delayed. Um, they tweeted out, with the important conversations taking place and important voices being heard around the world right now, we're moving our time to come together in play. We'll see you at EA Play Live 2020 on June 18th at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern, and I don't know what B S T time. You can, <laughs> you can Google that if you if you want to know. Um, well, we could do yeah. the math, right? It was 9 p.m. BST for a 1 p.m. thing. So yeah. I had three midnight. hours to it. There you go, midnight BST. Midnight. BST, the next which somebody day. else shouted out in the chat. I saw. I said British Standard Time, British Summer Time, apparently. So there you Whoa, go. Whoa, I would have never guessed. <laughs> Boy, matey, enjoy the summer. You know. Oh man, not surprising. It is what it is. Not yeah. much of a, not too big. Yeah, that was just a late one, in I think uh, you know last week when everything was getting announced or whatever. That happened after Games Daily as well. Mm-hmm. Oh man, but even with this delay, EA's play is so far away. If I wanted to know what's coming to Mom and Grab Shops today, where would I look? You go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. It's goddamn right. Yeah. Let me tell you what's out today. God, Pixel Kevin. Bombs on PC. Cannon Ship on PC. Heretic's Lot Prologue on PC. Edge of Dreams on PC. Edge of Dreams. Factory on PC. Out of all those, Greg, which do you want to play the most? Oh, man. Did you say cute triplets? I didn't. I didn't yet. <laughs> I'm looking at the list. Cute triplets is probably what I want And the last play. one is cute triplets on PC. <laughs> yeah, can I see the trailer for cute <laughs> triplets on PC? While Kevin gets that, let me tell you uh, real quick. Deals of the day. Neon Abyss on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. And PC is coming out on July 14th. That's supposed to be a new date. Um, also, new dates. Paper Beast coming to Steam will also be part of the Steam Summer Festival, 16th to the 22nd of June, where a free demo of the game will be available. So that's pretty cool. Um, oh, here we go. Here's cute triplets. Cute triplets. All right. Does, I was expecting something sexy. What is this? Wait, yeah. why were you expecting something sexy? <laughs> They're cute triplets, Kevin. But it's like hot triplets, I or you know. This I'm getting a lot of uh, Captain oh, Toad like vibes. Cats? Oh, they're kitty cats. Kitty jump cats. Jump into the middle of this thing. It's just a, it looks like a full playthrough. Just jump in the middle. Let me see what happens in the gameplay. Because right now we're just still close to like what cute. No, I, I can't move. Yeah. This is a uh, Steam's like trailer. Okay, just turn well, it off. Just, just turn, turn it off. off. Burn it with fire, please. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this oh, they episode got metal of cats. You Kind of Funny metal Games cats. Daily is brought to you by YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Why? I don't know, Greg. You tell me. 
because ladies and gentlemen, we're about to have a huge week on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Of course, we started off strong with Nick plays the last of us, the first part of the playthrough. There's going to be, of course, your live reactions as PSI love you XOXO uh, reactions to the PlayStation 5 event on Thursday alongside the live, watch it live reacts thing alongside Friday. Uh, there being, of course, your Last of Us uh, Part 2 review 1201 a.m. Pacific time Friday. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube.com slash kind of funny games has all those things. And I know I, I know it better than anybody. You're driving your car right now. You're bebopping and listening to me and Kevin make some jazz. Kevin, three, two, one. Bebop. Yeah, jazz right there. We made that for you. And so as we're doing that, you're enjoying your car ride. You're not worrying about YouTube. But I need you when you get home or pull over to the median right now or block traffic and get everybody to get out of their car and open their phone too. Go to YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games on YouTube and just subscribe. You got a Google account, I'm sure. Go in there and subscribe. I don't care if you never watch the videos. Are you aware that Kind of Funny now has a decisive lead on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games? That's I bullshit. Love I love You're going to sit there with a straight face and tell me KFAF and In Review are more popular than our games content? They are not. But it's the problem is all you fucking nerdy gamers, you love to sit there. We did it, Streamcast, did it. Why you're <laughs> video game. What I need you to do is get off your gaming asses, all right? Put down the Cheetos and Mountain fucking Dew and go to YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Click the fucking sub button. It, it costs you nothing. and it, I can't, Nick can't have this over me. All right. He can have a better rating on wiki feet. Fine. Whatever. But I'm not going to allow this to stand on YouTube. Kevin, that was one of the best things you've ever done. Ever. I love yeah, it. I was, real proud of him, that. Him testing it and like working on it. And I, I was watching the Xavier. Uh, no, I guess it might. Well, maybe it was Xavier uh, Blessings episode. It, it was either that one or it was the, the Khalif one. And it was like a serious moment. And like 14 Kevins popped up at the bottom <laughs> for like 10 seconds. <laughs> Seconds and then went away. I was like, "Yep, all right, oh, Kevin's working." God, I love it. I love it. Hey, but let's keep it in the ad real quick because I do want to say, like, if YouTube's not your thing, dude, we got other options. And I, I, the thing that we don't talk about enough, I don't think, is the podcast services having their own feed. Where kind of funny games has a lot of different feeds that you could subscribe to that would really help us. We got Gamescast. Sure. We got PS. I love you. We also have First Impressions, which is where we upload our first impression um thoughts as audio versions we haven't done many of those because games have haven't been really coming out as much um but that that feed does exist and subscribing to all those helps a lot and also we didn't give a shout out to last week's games cast which is a spoiler cast of the last of us part one and it was good it was, it was real one. good we should go check that out Anyways. My favorite was the argument in the chat of like, you can see how hard it is to make content for people where half, the, not even half, but some, a, a lot of people were like, oh, I hate this Greg doing the interview summary of Last of Us. <laughs> and then the other half being like, I live for this. I hope they do it all the time. But you can't, you can't win them all. You, know what I mean? you can't. But again, youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Don't let Tim muddy the message. Just go there and subscribe. All right, let's start small. We'll get you to the other podcast feeds eventually. But for right Great now, news. don't let Nick hold this over my head. Thank you. Now it's time to squat up. Daniel says, I need some best friends on PlayStation as most of my multiplayer Tim, breaking people... news, breaking news. It is official. PlayStation has tweeted, ladies and gentlemen. The reveal is happening June 11th, 1 p.m. Pacific time. There we go. Very exciting stuff. Um, squad up. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to squad up with us if you need people to play games. Daniel says, I need some best friends on PlayStation as most of my multiplayer people are on Xbox to hunt that mean old predator in hunting grounds. Uh, my gamer tag is... Ooh, please, pressurizer just spelled weird um <laughs> that's how like to do it pressurizer just for your information that's p-r-s-c-h-e-r-i-z-e-r -E pressurizer pressurizer Anyways, everybody i'm usually on around 9 p.m central i'm in texas during the week thanks for the help greg it means a lot and thank you for all the years of content that you and the guys have given us you're welcome <laughs> sir you're welcome go squad up with him i do actually want to do a one reader mail um question here greg before we sure. move on to the the your wrong section and then the post show and blah 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 big cat patreon. writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says good morning tim and greg i want to get right down to business monkey business the 21st anniversary of the original ape escape is in 16 days but we haven't heard anything substantial about the series in a long time while other playstation 3d platformers have been making a comeback like spyro ratchet and crash there have been seemingly no love from the playstation for the simian fugitives there have hasn't even been a mainline game released in 15 years my question is will the ps5 mark a return for the primates or is ape escape done for good thanks and all the best so couple things i want to say about this greg first off yeah 
I want a new Ratchet and Clank really, 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 really fucking bad. And I honestly think that it would be one of my most get hype moments of this PS5 reveal event. Wow. Okay. Because like I, I, it's just one of those things where we don't think about that. We think about all the other, like the big guys, right? Where's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac? I'm like, oh, but what about Ratchet? What about that Ratchet? About we haven't got a new Ratchet in... We haven't got a new good Ratchet in generations, it feels. <laughs> right? Like it's been since the PS3. Because PS4 me. only had the remake, which was amazing, which but was it was great. a remake. Okay, okay. As long as you're on the same page, yes. No, yes, I fucking I love great. it. I mean, I, I think that's it's debatably my favorite ratchet game. Wow. I still think I give it to um Kraken Time, but still it's between those two. Um, but I would love it like a PS5 ground up Ratchet and Clank game. That'd be super fun. Anyways, sure. back back to Ape Escape. Um, I was trying to figure this out because it is interesting. We see Sony kind of going down the well, trying to like come back and revitalize a lot of these games. Activision found major success across its hit PlayStation games with the Spyro games, with the Crash games, Crash Team Racing, all of that stuff, right? Um, and then we saw uh, PlayStation try to get that with Medieval. That didn't work as well. Um, but that's just because we were getting to that point where it's like, what can we reach down to get, right? Sure. Three platformers have a different place in people's hearts. It's different. Final Fantasy VII Remake. The, the examples are plentiful, right? Ape Escape, a game that's talked about enough. <laughs> I don't want to say yeah. a lot. I don't want to yeah. say a little. When, when we when we talk about PlayStation games, like people talk about Ape Escape, right? Like Ape Escape yeah. is is one of those ones where I'm not surprised to hear it brought up as like, oh, why isn't it coming back, or when's it going to come back, or whatever. Things about Ape Escape is tied to the dual, uh, the dual, the original Dual Shock, and like playing with all that stuff. You couldn't play it with the original PlayStation controller. Would you be surprised, Greg? Because this this surprised me. The reason I brought all this up is to say this fact. Ape Escape is not in the top 100 best-selling PlayStation games. Yeah. Does that is that bizarre me? to you? No. I'm so sick of hearing about Ape Escape. I mean, you said the same shit about Crash Bandicoot back in the day. Yeah, but I was joking about Crash. <laughs> but, but, but even <laughs> though it's like, I am legitimately kind of surprised that like, you look at the Spyro games, you look at the Crash games, and like, they're all in the top 20. Not all, but like most, I mean, even Spyro 2 is at 25. We got Frogger on PlayStation at number 26. Spyro 3 is at 27. You go down and it's like DDR. Your first DDR on PlayStation is on this list. Like we're getting pretty dire when it's coming to some of these games, man. Like, yeah, but wasn't Ape Escape? You're telling me that Derby Stallion 99 sold more than Ape Escape? Two Extreme, Test Drive 5. Dancing stage party edition. Like, we're just getting to a point where I'm like, I'm shocked. I would have thought that Ape Escape, maybe in the 50s. Am I crazy? Numbers. I I mean, yeah, I think Ape Escape was a bigger deal in Japan. And I think but that still, that and the, the PlayStation, uh, you know, mythos or whatever, the DNA of it or whatever, people who are super into PlayStation know about Ape Escape and like maybe played it and enjoyed it. But like, come on, just give we move on. No, we don't need more Ape Escape. And I'm maybe they're going to show it this week. Maybe Ape Escapes here. The 21st anniversary is what we're talking about now. It's funny. I you know I, I looked it up because I was like, didn't the Twitter account do some shit or whatever that was going to get it there? Googled it. Went, it took me to push square. Uh, January 3rd, 2020. Rumor. Is this Ape Escape Twitter account hitting at a new game in 2020? Directly below that. Uh, June 2019. News. Is this Twitter account teasing a new Ape Escape game? Every six fucking months, this Twitter shits something out and everybody's like, oh, fuck, it must be happening. Because hey, guess what? Did. It's going to happen. It's going to happen eventually. I don't know. I don't know that it will. Like, you're definitely, it happened, you it die, happened to- before you fucking die, you're getting another Ape Escape game. I don't know, man. I don't know. I guarantee it. Do you, okay, do you think we get a, a Parappa before we get an Ape Escape? Ooh, I hope so. I always like Parappa more. Parappa, you know, it's one of those things like, don't get me wrong, the game's hit or miss. Parappa the Rapper, 60th best-selling PlayStation game. I feel like if you were to come out and really, like, turn that on its head, not do a remake, well, I guess a remake, but I mean, like, from a ground up, do whatever you want with Parappa the Rapper, I think that could be really cool. Yeah. Ape Escape, they're just fucking apes. Who cares? Rugrats Search for Reptar is 62. How the fuck... Is Ape Escape not above that? I, I do think that a big part of it has to do with the DualShock controller thing because that limits sure. stuff. <sighs> I don't know, man. I'm blown away by this news. Blown the fuck away. Sorry, buddy. Somebody had to and they did. Yeah. 
you can go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong to let us know what we get wrong as we screw it up in this here kind of funny games daily. As a low midge says that the dual sense was announced in April 2020. Earlier, we said November 2019. Time flat circle. It is what it is. Oh. Um. Dude. Um, Lord Opponent says the Jeff Grubb Mel Gibson thing is the Project Maverick reveal from EA Motive. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, uh, yeah, Star Wars Maverick. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Grub, Grub Hub, who I'm not sure if that's Jeff Grubb or not, or just a Jeff Grubb fan. Jeff Grubb fan, number one, Grub Hub in the chat. Um, says someone else in the chat said Mel Gibson has a movie called Maverick. Tom Cruise is Maverick. Star Wars Maverick. Gotcha. That makes sense. Fucking let's go, baby. Let's go. You excited for them? Oh, Based yeah. on the key art we saw. <laughs> I mean, I don't even remember what that key art was. It's more Star Wars games. I'm excited for that. Let's go. And that's it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Stairway to Evan says on the official announcement of the PS5 event, they said the event will be streamed in 1080p and to wear headphones. <laughs> They're like, fuck you, sinuous sacrifice. We got you. That's interesting. And you know what, Greg? This is a conversation for another time. We're not going to have it right here, right now. But I got a lot of beef with headphones in video games. That's all I'm going to say. One Fair. day. We'll Fair. talk about that more. And I'm excited to see what Sony has to say. Um, but anyways, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Thank you very much for joining us on this beautiful Monday. Um, we will return for the rest of the week. I closed the dock like a freaking idiot. Who do we have hosting the rest of the week, Greg? It's Miller. simple. Tomorrow it'll be Imran and Fran. Worth pointing out, tomorrow before Games Daily, there is a Destiny event happening. Uh, it'll be Fran, Destiny Master himself, Andy, and me. Just me hosting, obviously, and asking dumb questions because I haven't played Destiny forever. We'll be live reacting to that on twitch.tv slash games. It'll go up later on youtube.com slash games. Then we'll roll into Imran and Fran hosting Games Daily. Then Wednesday, it's me and Gary. Thursday, it's me and Blessing. Friday, me and Blessing. There you go. Until then, though, we're going to do the Kind of Funny Games Daily Post Show for patreon.com slash kind of funny game supporters. Thank you very much, everybody. I love you. Bye. Bye.